Say have fun in your podcast. Fun in your podcast. Say I love you. I love you. Means you need it. The question you got to ask yourself, the white population of this country has got to ask itself. North and South, because it's one country, and for a Negro, there's no difference in the North and the South. There's just, you no know, a difference in the way they, in a way they castrate you. But that's, but the fact of the castration is the American fact. If I'm not the Negro here, and you invented him, you, the white people, invented him, then you got to find out why. Well... And the future of the country depends on that, whether or not it's able to ask that question. Hey, 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 hey. What's going on out there, everybody? It's the Negro Rogan Podcast. I am the KC Stork, one half of the Negro Rogan Podcast, I-70 Connect. I got my homeboy up in Topeka. He is in Topeka this time. Safe Travels made it back to the crib. 30 pieces of AG. What's going on, homeboy? Hey, what's going on, man? Um, it's good to be back back home. I know Kansas, for me, is not necessarily my home origin or whatever. It's not my birthplace. It's not even where, nigga, where I was it's where you, it's, where you, it's where you pay taxes at, nigga. That's what my dad told me. Yeah, it's where I pay taxes, but I do like I do like being back home, man. And you know me. You know, ever since I had our kid, it always goes back to our kid. It's just, and then Jamie, I like being away. I don't like being away from our kids or Jamie, man, so... Um, it's just good to be back. You know, I got my little training in and, and, and I met some cool folks. Um, I think one of them, I'm still working on him. It's an ex cop. Actually, he's a, he's a, not an ex cop. He was a ex law enforcement. Um, he's doing Bro. contract, he's doing contracting work for the, for the, well, he's a contracting officer for the VA now. So similar, just like me. Um, mm-hmm. so he has that law enforcement background. We were talking about it a little bit cause you know, we still, trying to fill fill our way with each other, you know what I'm saying? It's like I don't know if he's an alibi, you know, you know, if he's I mean not alibi, if he's an ally or you know, cuz cuz we're not really supposed to be talking about this stuff during class time or you know, during, right. during our TDY shit. And you know, you never know who you Wait, was, you, uh, was you, he white or black? He was black. But of even course. but but, yeah. even, but but even then though, you know what I'm saying? Like no, no, no I'm saying it's just that initial thing where uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you Nicaraguan or whatever, but you know, you're a person of color, and so like we yeah. tend to, we find ourselves when we go to these classes. <clears throat> don't be a lot of black people there. Don't be a lot of people of color there. So you tend to just navigate or migrate and find yourself situated around people who look like you, resemble you, or are going to have some dealings with with the, your same background being a person of color here in America. So I mean, I, I think that yeah, that, I always find myself sitting next to some dude and like. You know, they, and like you said, you don't know for sure if they down for the dog. You don't know for sure if they down the ride. You might be a Charles Barkley motherfucking Sheriff David Clark type motherfucker sitting next to you. You know what I'm saying? But you, but, but you always do find yourself sitting next to that person of color. I'm, I'm sure for, for, for women, like it's like a safety thing, tend to migrate more towards, you know, women in, in these classroom situations. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It, like, I always watch that dynamic when I, when I go to the, when I go to trainers for the military. And just, even though we all in fucking these pickle, these pickle uniforms and shit, you always see yourself kind of day one. Everybody's kind of spread out. It was like a two week course. By the time that, that second week coming to an end, you, you, you see how those relationships develop. You find, your, you find these, these little pockets within the classroom of just people of color, women, women of color, you know, all kind of grouping together. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, I've had them before, in, you know, on some of the other classes. Um, and, and like, I mean, it just, you know, we was never in the same table and, and we were never teammates like that or whatnot. So, but everybody I met so far in these trainings, you know, they either, they either look like me or people of color or they're veterans. That's one thing I like about the co- the contracting officer field right now, um, especially in the VA, man, it's like, You'll you'll find a lot of uh, 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 of veterans or or, or or just former military members are in that class uh, in in that career field and and it's it wasn't it's not the same thing I can't I couldn't say the same thing when I was an accountant and I couldn't say the same thing in, in other fields too you know what I mean um, yeah but but like in the contracting uh, uh, contracting officer uh, career field there's a lot of uh, whether it be in the VA or uh, DOD or any 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 other agency. Um, there's a lot of uh, 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 veterans, man, out there. And so it was good to see, one, it was good to see not only people of color, but it was good to see veterans, you know, uh, get, get, get some of the, some of the, some of the 
uh, love and, and and they're in a good career. They're not like in a in a bullshit ass career. You know what I mean? Like like we can in in our class. I think the lowest grade was probably a nine. I was probably like the uh, the lowest grade. I think the highest grade probably was a twelve or a thirteen in there. I was like, damn. Right. But it kind of all depends on where you're at and 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 what what is what it is that you're doing in the career field and whatnot. But anyway, so so yeah, we were still filling each other out, man. Like, um, he this time we were actually sitting on our table. But but it's interesting though, you know what I mean? Like, you know, we, even in the military, we go to different classes and you know, different training and shit. Like, you don't really know who you gonna meet. You know, what I mean, we're, so, we're all wearing right. we're all wearing the same uniform, or in this instance, we're all in the same organization. But we don't know if we're about the but the right things, or and I say the right things, and I mean like. Whatever side I'm on, whatever side that is, you know, are you are you gravitating towards that or, or are you pulling away from that? You know what I mean? So so with me and him, even like the first couple of days, we're like, we weren't clashing or nothing. It wasn't like butting heads. It was just still filling each other out like, you know, you know, he has some stuff, some material he wanted, he needed to share. And he was like, you know, whatever. But but I think it was like, um, I think the the... I guess like the aha moment can can because I'm the same way and, and he even recognized that I'm the same way whether I'm with my family uh, I, I I try not to code switch too much obviously it depends on 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 the situation of course uh, but at the same time like you know I try not to code switch too much and if I do it's minimal you know what I mean maybe my language right. or whatnot whatnot is, is is a thing that changes because you can't really change your appearance or whatever. Um, <clears throat> on the spot, but so like you know the aha moment came in like like a couple um a couple of days later after our, our class and and I, I and I talked to him about it and it was just like we were leaving class and I was like hey man like <coughs> excuse me and I was like hey man like I know you was ex law enforcement man like how do you how do you feel about you know like certain things and he was like man and he and he get, he did that <sighs> shoulder shrug. The heavy shit on. I was yeah, like, okay. He probably, he probably then, gets it a lot. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, but it was like, I, I, okay, I saw my opening and we started talking and, you know, and, you know, one conversation led to another. Um, and then we then we started conversating a little bit more after we went, went, went out to have like a little early dinner or whatever. And it right. turned and it turns out like, you know, he he was doing the same thing I was doing. He was trying to read me even in the other classes. He was like, I'm still I'm still trying to read you because. I know everybody, all my all, all my folks back at, the, at my station say you you cool, but I don't know. I have to see it for myself, and I was like, all right. And then anyway, yeah. he he paid the, uh, uh, like the, the the I guess the ultimate compliment. He's like he's like man, I, I you know my bad, bro. I, I I I I read you wrong, and he's like you you been you been you been like the same since day one, since when we first had a couple classes, man. It was like you ain't ever really deviated from that. Um, He's like you. You just you about it, and, and like I, I consider you an ally. And I was like, yeah, man. Like, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I was like, I ain't even gonna front. I was doing the same thing too. I was trying to read you because, you know, now that what we're sitting. What does he mean by that? He considers you an ally. What does that mean? Well, because of a conversation that we had about you know like, uh, uh, like certain you know where I stand on like, um, uh, as far as like. Uh, politically, you know, I'm a Democrat. Uh, if anything, I'm more like a middle, middle of the road Democrat, but d- Democrat nonetheless. And then, um, you know, my 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 personal feelings towards uh, 45, and even just me just addressing him as 45, um, and then just you know, you know, just kind of just those little 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 uh, nuances. And I I said like, look, I respect law enforcement, and this and that, but at the end of the day, that's a, that's as a career, bro. You could always get out and find yourself another career. And him being a lot, uh, ex-law enforcement, he felt the same way. So we was like already vibing. Yeah, there's like little little subtleties that 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 made changes or whatnot. But he was really all about um, about about you know helping his community, doing it for his culture. And I said, that's cool, man. I'm doing the same thing too. I'm trying to do it for for people of color. I, I know I can't relate to the black community, but I, I you know I, I sympathize with it, man. You know. Um, we, we may not go through, through the exact same things, but we, the, the, we, we do share some of the same effects uh, and some of the same treatments. Yeah. So, and then, so just in our, in our, in, in like a normal conversations, man, we just started vibing and, and, and that's how I say, like he was, he considered me an ally. He's like, look, I know that 
I could call you one day and I know that I know for one, I know you ain't you ain't going you you voted for Hillary. Two, you ain't about to ride for Bernie. And three, you ain't about to ride for 45. And I was like, just by you simply calling him 45, I already know. You don't even want to speak that man's name. And I was like, same here, bro. And I got, and I was like, and then we talked about the podcast that me and you had. I was like, man, he was like, look, I got me and my boy, he's, he's black, I'm brown. And we got this podcast and we just talk about mental health, behavioral health stuff. But, you know, with things going racial, you know, things going on in the country, we... We talk about it. We talk about it from from our point of view. You know what I mean. And, and then he was like, "Oh man, cool." Uh, he's like, "Yo," and he, you know, he wanted to hit. A, he, we might get a new listener here and there. Uh, I asked him how he listened to his podcast, and you know, he didn't really answer. Nope. So uh, we he's like, we he's everywhere." Like, so he's like, "I could get it," and I was like, "All right." I mean, I trust you. But anyway, so no, so all that to say, you know, him being ex law enforcement, um, I kind of want. I'm still working on him, trying to see if he comes on. You know. Be, working for a government agency, you know, people don't always like to be on record or whatnot. So, right. um, so I can't, you know, really force them or expect them to come on. But I may have, I may do like a little, you know, shoot him a couple questions, see how he feels about it. You know, that's, mm-hmm. you know, that, I think that's important. Just like uh, three guys are, they had uh, uh, a gentleman that that was uh, a Baltimore PD, uh, but he left the force because he saw like all the bureaucracy and the bullshit that was going on. That it was never really in the favor of, of people of color, and, and 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 even just the tactics and the training, um, it just did. It just basically went against uh, people of color, uh, primarily in the Baltimore area, against against the black community, man. Right. So, and so, like you know, here I have a firsthand experience from some, from one of my colleagues that was a former law enforcement. He left because of that. You know, he left. That was one of the primary reasons why he left. You know, you get to a point and. He had enough, and he, how, long, how long was he on though? I think like a good, because um, he's been with the VA for I think four, three, three, four years. It might be three wow. years, so he might have been on the force for like a good five, six years, man. So like right, out, like because uh, I think he was, uh, he might have been, he might have, he was in the you navy. Still wonder how how many niggas he he he, he wants to get fucked up. <laughs> well, I mean, those are the type of questions I want to, you know. We just yeah. started to make the connection, so I'm not gonna like bombard him. No, no, I'm not, I'm not quick. saying that. I'm not saying for you. I'm just saying, you, you know, you, in my in my mind, we'd be sitting there having that talk, and I'd be sitting there thinking, how many niggas did you watch get fucked up, hemmed up, and like uh, sent up sent up the fucking bink bink because of some some uh, motherfuckers implanting evidence and just fucking up the crime scene, or just you know pushing a motherfucker to confess for a crime that they didn't commit. Yeah, and like I mean, to be honest, like I mean, I guess I was prepared to to do all that, but I just wanted to make sure that that it was, it was want, okay. You don't, want, you don't want to do that like off top, no, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but like, I mean, speaking, we'll see what happens, man. We'll see what happens with that. So, um, you know, speaking speaking of that, I got uh two of my well, I think about my boy James, his brother. They talked about they wanted to come on. Uh, I, uh, James, he can come on. Talk about uh he he sort of got the casino for a long time, so I just wanted to talk to him about that. He was a uh, a poker dealer for a long time at the casino down here, and then his brother Joe, he works in uh Kansas City School District, you know, which can be a little rough sometimes. So definitely get him on there and talk about education and uh, policies and things going on in Jefferson City, which is he he could he teaches down at Central, which is in the Kansas City, Missouri side of things, so our few listeners out there in Jefferson city and Jeff, Jefferson city, Missouri is our, is our state where our state capital is located at. So when we talk about things that's happening in Jefferson city, which is so far away and how they affect a lot of things going on in, in the city in uh, Kansas city, as far as schooling and funding and stuff like that. So uh, I told him, you know, we get on the weekends. Sometimes we can, we got families and shit, but I would always, you know, on the weekends uh, and also when it's the holidays, if we ever get on, get a word out to him and see if he wants to get on and chop it up and talk about shit like that. He's, he's a very political brother. He, you know, of course all my friends, just people I communicate with, you know, we, we, we talked about this, that I communicate with, I deal with, I don't hate them, you know, but I'm sure some of them voted for or fuck with 45 or Bernie Sanders apologist and all kind of shit like that. But all my hardcore friends, they all fuck Tang, they all fuck Bernie and, they, and you know, and yeah, so it, it should be a good talk. Both of them are pretty funny dudes. Both of them pretty smart. So yeah, 
and then one day we'll get Damon on here, so mm-hmm. it'll be that, that that'll be what it is. So anyway, man, let's get into it, man. So shit, what you what you what, I got I got uh what's up? All right, so I know we're gonna get into it, and you, you already know we had our last po- last podcast was about two and a half hours, and we're just talking about potty training. All right, I know you, I know we all had uh. uh uh, I listened to that show like maybe four or five times over, four or five times over, man. Like, but it was it's one of the more more entertaining ones. But I guess in a nutshell, that's man, why I, I like it though because we just we we some people don't understand. We'll get on and say we're gonna do this and do that, and then <laughs> it's just it's just like this isn't a scripted this isn't a scripted show. It's much like life. So you know, here we talk about shit. I'm sure sometimes people agree to it, or like it, and listen to it. Sometimes people listen and go, hey. But you know, it's not to be dismissive of our fans. But once again, you know, this is a show that we that we're doing for us, you know, and for uh, for the few friends, you know, that we had they come on the show that really fuck with us. Well, I, I guess you know one of the feedbacks I did get was uh, that they enjoyed the the what they enjoyed um, our our friend from from Lincoln, Nebraska. They they enjoyed the show, especially because like you know, it's something that that that. You know, as being as young parents, I know you're not old, but I still consider you young. But being as young parents, like, yeah, we may have had certain experiences growing up in life, and we may uh, have observations, made observations throughout as we were growing up, and how things should be or whatnot. Mm-hmm. But it was good that 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 we had that conversation though, because like, you know, yeah, you know, we 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 got to teach one. You say teach one, uh, each one or whatever. Uh, yeah, each one, each one, teach one. Each one. There you go. But. But it's like uh, it just just kind of going to that simple thing of potty train. Like it's not necess- there's it's not a universal definition for it because what you, what you may consider, like we still consider. Because um, I didn't get my point across last podcast, but like we consider Logan still being potty trained in in potty training. We don't right. think he's we don't think he's quote, wearing air quotes quote unquote. Uh, potty trained yet because we're now we're just while he doesn't have any accents he wears underwears all day and he I ha- identifies and tells you the aides or mom and dad or whoever that, that he needs to go potty he, he, we still have to work on the fact that he still got to pull his pants down and, and then pull him back up and flush so there's things that we still got to work on so we're still in right. the training phase but again though like our friend from Lincoln Nebraska he's like yo I like that because um, there's not a lot of things that we're gonna be able to relate to, but just just having that 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 something that that, that he's go, they're going through themselves and and knowing how the importance of of encouraging and pushing, but not pushing too hard on things. Yeah, we're just talking about body training, but it's just life in general. It's like and just like how you were saying, like you don't wanna you don't wanna completely destroy. Uh, your kid's attitude by a, by a criticism you're going to give them on, on the field uh, or off the field or or, or, or the lack of uh, just discourages lack of more motivation to play basketball or football or whatever the case may be. Right. You wanna you wanna find that sweet spot uh, or that's or, or, or that that you're able to let them know that there's a criticism or there's an opportunity, but also let them know that you are encouraging him, like you are supporting him. Cause you don't want to, you don't want to have to regress. Cause, or or how we said it on that, we don't want to do harm to them because, or we don't want them to stop doing what they're doing. We want them to progress at their pace, however, however fast or slow, however rate that is. And I think me as a young parent, and and you as you know, six time parent, <laughs> uh, but ding, ding, you, ding. you 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 already know, like you know, you you each one is gonna be different, and and and. You've learned early, well, probably now you probably know that you know that. And but me going going with my first one, starting with my first one, like that's that's where like I'm learning the stuff, you know. And I, and I have people, and I have surrounded myself with great people, you know. One of them being you is like, yeah, you're my boy. You're you're a couple years older than me, but at the same time, and I don't and I hold you to a certain standard, just like you do to me too. Yeah. But I look up to you. Um, and 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 I expect you to how you said like you know you you want me to be a certain way, and how you always say hey Frank man I I know you're going to be great that's a lot of fucking pressure but at the same time that's it's good to have I consider that an a, an encouraging uh, um, statement for me as a young parent like 
You know what I'm saying? You're you're not te- you're not you're not here telling me, um, hey, le- look, learn. This is what I you know. It's, it's like you're not talking down to me, and you're not telling me as a brand new parent, like, hey, Frank, you need to do this, you need to do that. You're like, it's kind of like how I see I see how you are with me. I see how when, when you know this is like after listening to the episode a lot of times. It's like. Yeah. This is how this is what you've learned how to do things. And even the military did did the same thing for us. Um you talk to the person just like how you try to you try to have a normal conversation, but throw throw but you try to throw in there and make points at like positive things or negative things or or or, or that, that 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 are are basically thrown at or said in a subtle way as to making sure that you that, that you're encouraged and you keep supporting, but not necessarily destroy um, the, the the character of that person or, or 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 that child. And I think that was real important. And I think I mean I don't know if we ever came across it or whatnot, but I just wanted to make sure on this episode that that while while we took like two and a half hours to get to that, like that's I think that um, that's where where I was at. I think the conversation went the way it went, but um, uh, ultimately, like you know, that's. It is what it is. We're gonna keep learning. We're, we're gonna make mistakes, but but trying to find and in this journey, trying to find that that those approaches, how we're gonna approach different things, um, you know, we're gonna learn from it. Anything you want to add to that? No, um, just it just had me uh, just yeah, mm-hmm. mind mind blown, huh? <laughs> not mind blown. Not, no, just just thinking about it. It's like Ca- just really. You guard, huh? No, I think I've learned. I mean, I'm, and I'm still working at it. I still go at it uh, as far as like being a parent because I know I'm not the the best at it. Um, hey, so I always try to. Yeah, huh. I always try to. Uh, I always I don't know I'm just like like the, like the other day. Like, I've always made a point like when it comes like to sports and stuff like that to really emphasize the fact that it's a game. Um, don't get too caught up in it. Your success in there, celebrate that. If you mess up or think you fail, you know, think about the things you did wrong and how you came to that point so it can get better. Like even with my with the all my children, I always ask them, you know, do you, do you want do you want my input? Because you know, just because they're your children and you're a parent doesn't really give you a right to say, hey, on this game that you're playing that means nothing. Let me tell you where you fucked up at. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to hear that. So I always ask them, "Hey, I hear, I, 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 I see you. I see you upset. I see you frowning. Uh, you and I both know that things didn't go the way you wanted to go. Can I give you a little input from you know my little time of playing this sport that we both love to play? Can I give you a little input to, to, to kind of help you out so that maybe next next week when you play this game, that won't happen? And and true, maybe because I'm their father, they always say yes." But they always they always come back and thank me for doing it that way. They always all my children always come back and say, "Thank you for not being the crazy dad up in the stands yelling and screaming. Thank you for and now and, and I'm a and for my twins. I'm I'm a coach, so I I could be on the sidelines. Hey, God damn it, blah 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 blah. And they're like, you know, when we mess up, you always are you provide counsel as far as like uh we don't say counsel is my word, but you always like you know provide a little. Hey, I need you to do this for me, and then off the field. You get really deep into really dig into deep of why I want you to do it this way and how it builds upon the scheme of our defense and stuff like that. And they really appreciate that because we got one parent and like his son, his son plays, and his son's a pretty decent athlete. But his, but you can tell his son is doing everything for his dad, and that's like a to me that's a that's a really that's a setup for failure because. Only when his dad comes to practice does he go all out. Only when his dad's at practice, he's sprinting and running. When his dad's not there, he's kind of bullshitting around. Uh, even in the games, he's kind of like sometimes he's not all there. But as soon as his dad's there and his dad's like, it annoys the fuck out of me. Hey, hey, you got that? And he's always talking to that. I, I, I've had to tell him before, hey, man, I don't talk to the other kids, man. Just, you know, you're, you're first of all, I don't know why you're on the sideline. You're a parent. You're not a coach. If you want to coach up your son, that's fine. But don't be down here. Telling, first of all, don't be telling the kids you did this wrong. Don't do that. We're not here for that. You can tell them, hey, you need to improve this or do this better. The words do matter and they do count and they, and they help. When you say you did this wrong, a lot of kids just shut down on you, especially when you some crazy motherfucker they don't know. And 
and I, and I told him I when we talked about I worry about your son because the only time he really 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 tries hard is when you're here. So is he playing football because you want him to play? Or is he playing football because he wants to play? Because my because my boys my my boys my daughter they all play the same whether I'm there or not. You know so. And I always make it a point to say, are you doing this because you want to do it? Because at the end of the day, if you play football, don't play football. Play basketball, don't play basketball. As long as you reach a nice old age and happy, that's all I care about as a parent. Right. Yeah, man. I think, you know, like I said, I mean, I, I know we're going to have – we have – you know, we both love sports, so we're always going to make analogies to to uh, to sports and try to relate them to our everyday life or whatnot. Uh, but by no means, don't think, you know, Pete listeners out there, don't 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 get caught up in the fact that just because we like sports and we use sports analogies or whatever to make a, a point or whatnot, we're not all about sports. I mean, we we are about our, our careers. We are about our family and all that. Um, but it's just how, how it just helps us simplify certain things and certain techniques. Um, and, it, and and sometimes, you know, those approaches work in real life, too. And as was yeah, the but, case in, but, in potty training and, you know, and you high, raising your kids. You know what I mean? So Yeah, but, but me having a teenage daughter and her playing basketball, I mean, that's a, door, that's a doorway to open up as far as, uh, yeah, sure, we're, start, we're talking about basketball. But I think sports can and often do relate to a lot of things in life. You know, whether the success, dealing with failure, um, not getting so caught up in in – Oh, I you know I we 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 beat this other team by a hundred points, so I ain't got to practice, and that kind of goes to like, oh, high school was easy for me, so now I'm going to college, I ain't got to study. So I think there's a lot to be learned and lessons to be learned in sports. And I mean, not everything can be, not every life lesson can be applied to sports, but I think it is a doorway, especially for like, like I said, with me, with having a, a teenage daughter, uh, you know, as they get into those teenage years, you know, sometimes you know they. They, they, they love their parents. They love their, you know, their dad, their moms. But you know, teenagers are awkward motherfuckers. You know, they're going through life. They're trying to figure out life. You know, she's trying to figure out: do I, do I, do I go to the East Coast? Do I go down south? Do I go to the West Coast as far as school and stuff like that? So she has all these decisions, you know, that affect her. They affect me or her mother because you know she's gonna be far away from us. And that that makes us sad. She could come to Washburn and she could chill with us. No, fuck no. She needs. She needs. I mean, but no. But she no. She wants to go to. She needs to. Fo- she, need, she needs to focus on school. And Washington is a good place yeah, to focus yeah. on school. Fo- fo- focusing on school, me. I think you have a better focus if you get the fuck away from your family. That's what I think. Oh, okay. I mean, she'll be down here. So I'll, I'll put her in our in our basement. I'm, 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 I'm an hour away. That's not. That's yeah. not really away from your family. It's but I mean, right. she's, she's she's probably gonna end up going on the East Coast somewhere. But once again, you know, we give our input. But she's at that age now of where she has to make her own decision because she has to live with it, right? You know, so it's like, you know, we all we spend all these time, 17, 18 years of teaching people how to dress, eat, uh, shit, all the little social cues and all the little things that make them good contributing human beings or human resources to this planet. And then it all comes down to a moment where they graduate high school and they have to make a choice of a school that affects them. You know, it affects them in their trajectory in life. So yeah, as a parent, you sit there and you want to help, but that that final decision has to rest with them because they have to be okay with it. And that, and that's a hard. That's a hard part as a parent. Yeah, because because even because even when she makes her decision or, or her choice or whatnot, like you're still a parent, and, and you. I, I know you're going to be supportive and. Hopefully everybody around her is going to be supportive, whatever she decides to do. But you're still a parent, so, like, I still imagine, like, I'm like, man, why are you going over there? It's kind of like you have that 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 thought. It's like, if you go over there, you're going to, like, you know, you're going to like, fuck up. Well, why don't you go over here? This is a better place, and we're closer, and this and that. So, you know, it's just like us. Like, I think about that shit. Like, yeah, I want Logan to go to Florida State University. Uh, that's just because, you know, I, it can't be my alma mater. Well, I, I'm thinking. Th- I'm, well, let me, I might retract yeah. that statement because I'm thinking about going back and getting a, a BA, an online BA from FSU, so I can say that FSU is my alma mater. <laughs> but yeah. whatever. Uh, G- I don't G- know. I, I, I don't know if the finances are, 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 are where they need to be at. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not about this. Uh, 
You know what, federal government? You you might not get my tuition shit paid pay back, bro. You might just yeah. get fifteen dollars a month. Bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, but but overall, you have but overall, like I, I look at it as you know, is me wanting her to be close because it makes it better for her, or because it's easier for me as a father and as a parent. And yeah, nine times out of ten, when I go to my checklist, it's because it's easier for me as a father and as a parent. Her going further away, staying closer. I mean, as long as she goes to a good program and does the work, that doesn't change the outcome. Yeah, you know I, mean, what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's all. You know, yeah, that's. I guess I agree with that because even for me, like I'm 34 now, and so you know, I you know, probably just like you, I went. Well, no, not not like you because you went to college right after high school, um, and you played ball, Division One and then Division Two. Uh, but like I, I went straight to. Cause you know, I told you with my struggles for my freshman years, like so when I finally became a senior, I used to, I, I didn't even graduate with my class. I graduated in the summer, so so like right after right after that, I went into the military. Um, mm-hmm. It wasn't that it wasn't because like I, I you know I was dying to go or this and that. There was there was a couple of underlying issues too, you know, a couple of things, but primarily it's like I didn't want to. I didn't feel like I was ready for college, and I know we hear that shit all the fucking time. But I, I generally didn't think. I mean, I just came from being behind for playing playing catch up for three and a half years, going to day school and and taking night court classes, um, taking a city bus to another high school at nighttime. You know, yeah, it was only one class, but still though. So for like mm-hmm. for for like three and a half years, I'm doing that shit. So I'm like, nah, I don't think I'm ready for 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 this college shit. I mean. So I, so I, you know, I went, I went away, uh, whatever, you know, explore the world, which is basically Kansas, Texas, Virginia, yeah. Missouri, <laughs> mid Missouri, and Iraq, <laughs> and a little bit of hey, but, but like, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but like, my thing after high school was, and I'm pretty sure everybody goes through this, is like, yo, I'm, I'm ready to, you know, spread my wings, be off of my own. Do my, I'm a own, peacock. Do, do my own thing, this and that, and, and it was great. Don't get me wrong; I encourage that all the time, and I'll, I'll tell my kids, you know, and, and our nephews and family members and friends, I'll tell them, "Hey, man, go do, you know, spread your wings, man." But you know, just be cautious and, and be, you know, courteous and, and and all that shit. But you know, just pay attention to to your surroundings and all that. But for me, what I what I found here lately is, and I'll say, and I say lately, but really is in the last. Five, six years within the five in the last five or six years, I've noticed that um, that I've been I've been moving towards instead of moving away from uh, I'm because I'm already like literally like moved away from my family away from my family, but uh, relationship wise in the last five years I think we've always had one, but we've always been the we, we've never been the type to call each other and, and always keep keep tabs on each other. It's like, you know, whenever it happens, it happens. You know what I'm saying? Because we know we have life to, to live. But in the, within the last five five or six years, uh, and more so here recently since Logan was born, I, I've been more gravitating back to my center, which is my family, my mom and my sister and my brothers and my nephews. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's funny how life works. You know what I'm saying? Right after high school, I was ready to get the hell out of the way. Um, but, but now at this age... You know, I'm, I, you know, I, 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 it's kind of one of those things like I had it before. I didn't, I didn't take advantage of it. Now, now it's like, you know, I'm in this situation, but we make it work now. You know what I'm saying? We see each other more. We make more effort to see each other and, 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 and appreciate each other all the time. Hey, and with the, whoever invented FaceTime, man, I'm going to tell you right now. I know Skype, we, you know, we see each other and all that stuff, but whoever came up with that Skype, I mean, that, that FaceTime thing on the phones, man, pure genius, though. Like, you don't understand, like, that, that's a, like, you don't know how underappreciated that shit is, man, until, like, it's, well, for me, in the last two weeks, like, I've been gone. So, so, like, you know, the people that I normally talk on the phone, I, you know, it's no more phone conversation, but, you know, my wife, my son, I, I, I have conversations, but I see him visually, you know what I mean? And right. so even FaceTime, you know, alleviated a lot of that, you know what I'm saying? So that's always good. But, but like, you know, going back to your daughters, like, you're, you know, you may feel like getting daughter, away. Daughter, daughter. Huh? You said daughters. 
Oh no, going back to your daughter. Oh, I thought I heard that 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 old black man. <laughs> nah, <of Pearl>. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> you put S on it and everything. <laughs> no, nah, but like just getting back to, I mean, it's crazy because like you know, like in in, in on the onset of things, like you're. You know, eventually people are going to come back to the center, which is their family or whatnot. So, like, you know, and, and, and it's going to be, I think, you know, if she moved away, I think she would have, I guess, like, for me, it's like the further away I moved and the and, and, and the longer I moved away from them, the closer I've gotten in hearing my latter part of my life right now. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, I, and, and, you know, I, I, I think that we all come to that. You know what I'm saying? Like, because look at you. you like, you... I mean, for lack of better words, I mean, you probably stay relatively close to the Midwest um, yeah. and close to Kansas City. But, you know, and you, but you joined the military, you still had, you went to different places, this and that. But um, you always came back to your city. I understand that your kids are there. And I, and you, you've even said it from day one when I met you, you know, where my kids are, that's where I'm going to be at. Whether you were, you know, you were at that moment, that time, you were AGR, so you and and so um, active guard reserve, so you're basically active yeah. duty, and it's like, you know, my next duty station, man, it may take me away from my kid, away from my kids, but you know, where my uh, where, wherever my kids are at, that's where I'm gonna be at, you know, or or close enough to it. So, I mean, it's crazy how it works, you know what I mean? Like, we always want to try to be close to our kids, we always try to be close to our family and all that. But we find a way somehow, some way, though, to to make it work, right? Yeah, but my my thing is this goes this story I have pulled up. I worry about shit like this. I don't look know if you, 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 look, look you heard you, this. Look, look at you segueing, like like. No, all right, like, I, all right, do like, it. So 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 white freshman who rubbed used tampons on her black roommate's roommate's bag gets arrested, and this happened here at uh, West Hartford, uh, well University of Hartford, up in uh, Connecticut. So here we go. She boasted about poisoning her Jamaican Barbie. This is the white girl. Brianna Brochu's mugshot was released. Let's go to the story. What did she... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so this is what happened. So in it, in it being the uh, the girl, the black girl who was poisoned by... Well, try to be poisoned by her roommate. And she describes getting sick while being given the cold shoulder by the roommate. It started with throat, with throat pain, she explained. I thought maybe it was colder up here. I'm just catching a cold. After a month, it got to the point where I had extreme throat pain that I couldn't sleep to the point where I couldn't speak. I'm spending my own money that my parents gave me for food and groceries. The health center on campus is not free. In fact, they're expensive. Uh, in the post, Jazzy, that's the little girl, explained that her test would come back negative. She, prescribed, she was prescribed antibiotics by the campus doctor for bacteria in her throat. So... You may ask, what was going on during this time? Why was this little girl getting sick uh, at her new university? So that, so basically, little girl got sick. She got tired of being treated by shit by her roommate. So she finally was like, I'm leaving. So when she told her roommate I was leaving, the little white chick, Brochu, whatever the fuck how you pronounce her name, she put this on Instagram. And what's up with racist people in, in Instagram and social media? They can't help themselves, bro. It's like, I got, I got to put this racism on the social media. I can't help it. I got I got to put the fact that I'm a not shit person out into the world. So, finally, finally did it, yo. Wait a minute. Here, here, hold on. Finally did it, yo. And I'm trying to read this. Ain't no the fuck it's like a block of words. Finally did it. Yo girl got rid of her roommate after one one in 12 months. Wow. She went one and a half, but she put one one in one twelfth month. After one and a half months, uh, spitting in her coconut oil, putting moldy clam dip in her lotions, rubbing used tampons on her backpack, putting her toothbrushes in places. And in the article, they tell you what she was putting this girl's toothbrush in her ass. That's wow. Don't with a something, but she says the sun don't shine, and so much more. I can finally say goodbye to my Jamaican Barbie. And this is what. Wait, so hold on, man. I'm, I'm, so I'm, conf- I'm confused. I know, I know you got. Okay. I'm so I'm confused. So, so she calling her her Jamaican, Jamaican Barbie. So, so she, so, so old girl was, this, was old girl was Jamaican with her. Was no, she I in love with her or something? I think it's supposed to be like a racial slur. Cause like, like if you look, if you look at, oh, uh, we don't have. I could share the screen, I guess. But they got, they got. Some, a lot of these pictures have been blurred out. 
But it's a, you know, a little black little it's a little black girl. She probably what freshman, I guess. Uh, hair is pretty nice. You know, she's she's probably thinking, oh, she. And, and it's that thing we see with a lot, a lot. Even though here we are at the same university, so they both did Harvard University of Harvard in Connecticut, which is probably a pretty pricey university. I don't know. I can look that up, but I'm not. You can if you want to. But even though here we are at the same place. That's some bullshit. You delegating some shit to me. Of, a lot, a, a lot of white. I mean, the listener in general. A lot of white people. A you lot of white it. people. You do who, it, brown guy. Who who don't think they're racist automatically think, oh, you the black person don't belong here. But it's like, why don't I belong here? Or they assume that, oh, you must have gotten some special thing to be here to be where I'm at. Why is the default that when it's white, it's all right? Why is the default that when you because you're a white person. You deserve to be here more than I do, or you've done more work to get here than I've done. And so here we find this this this, this black girl. Uh, she probably you know takes good care of herself, probably holds herself in a certain way. I, I don't I don't know. So that's probably where the little Jamaican Barbie shit comes from. But if you read it, it's like oh, you know she called Jamaican Barbie. Like, no, it's supposed to be a slight. Like my little Jamaican Barbie, this little black bitch that thinks she's better than me. And it's like. I don't. I, I've never gotten that. It's like, why do you think you deserve to be here more than any other person just because they black? So yeah. So it's shit like that. So basically, this girl was like putting moldy, moldy shit in her shampoo, putting moldy shit in her, you know, body, you know, stuff that she puts in her body, putting her tooth, putting this black girl's toothbrush in her ass, now this girl's brushing her teeth with fecal matter and all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Getting sick. You know, I mean, getting really sick of the fact that she couldn't speak. So who, who knows what could have happened? This would have kept going on. And I'm glad they they got arrested. Will anything come of it? I don't know. I'm sure they're going to get a boo-hoo. She's not right. Hey, hey, dog. Hey, 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 it just hit me. <laughs> it's not funny. They're going to be like, how could she be racist? Her roommate was black. <laughs> the same roommate she tried to fucking kill. They're going to say, how could she be racist? Her roommate was black, so I can see I can see that bullshit coming down the pipeline. But yeah, though, it's little shit like that, though. And, and true, even if my even if uh, Zakia was, you know, two blocks down the road, you know, it, it ain't gonna stop shit like this from happening. But it definitely makes you worry when she's fucking, you know, six seven, you know, states away. You know, it's true. My uh, my sister Sylvia, she's in West Virginia, so she ain't too far away from, from Pennsylvania. So that's the only reason why I'm really, really, really not worried, you know. But you know, if Sylvia's husband, uh, Chester, gets a better job offer, you know, to to another place, he gonna end up moving. You know, he, that, that's the life of a coach. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. But yeah, but, but it's shit like that, man. It's just some sick motherfuckers out in the world, bro. Yeah, man. Like I was, I just pulled it up too, and it's the. Oh, is that what you're doing? Yeah, and then she, I guess right now they have her down as a, as a former University of Hartford student faces hate crime charges. So yeah. So I don't know if they dismissed She's currently or, out on bail for $1,000. $1,000. All right, hold on. Hold that thought. Because cause that bail shit is, is a different topic for right now. Cause, oh, I, know, I, I, I know how the bail system works. Yeah. Oh, it's, no, no. It's because it, 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 of... It's cause of, it's cause of what happened over the weekend when I was especially on Monday morning when people were indicted yeah. and then <laughs> they, they paid the bail and they're sitting at home now. But, but that's own, not work though. But if but, you if you rich you get to sit at home if you if you like I got a uh I ain't gonna say her name. I got a co worker man. Uh her brother been sitting in jail for like a year and a half dog waiting for his trial to get started, nigga. Because they can't afford a motherfucking bail. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? No, I hear you. I hear you. That's some bullshit, though, man. That's some bullshit, though. I mean, true. The yeah. Nick. I mean, but the thing is, you're supposed to be presumed innocent to from guilty. So if anybody says, "Well, he shouldn't have done this," I'm like, "Hold up, he ain't, he ain't had a trial. That nigga's innocent. So why is an innocent man in jail? You know what I'm saying? Actually, yeah, I keep it right cool. there. Oh. She was arrested two days ago, was going to court tomorrow with me. No, man, I'm just reading this shit, dog. It is sick, dog. That is sick, dog. It's like, yo, racism. Racism is a sickness, dog. That shit needs to be in the DSM-5, bro. Yeah. Okay, this nigga got a phone call. He leaves me on here by myself, man. Fuck Frank. 
Fuck him and his phone. Fuck him and his phone calls. Oh, what's up, man? You back? My bad. I was saying number good things about you. No, nah, I'm good. I'm back now. I'm back. Dude, what are you listening to, nigga? Did you, did you download some fucking? No, nah, it's some, it's some you bullshit gotta, ass commercial. You gotta listen, listen to fucking commercials to get free coins or something. Nah, though, you know you gotta fucking listen to all the commercial until until you get the the YouTube video or the clip or video clip and shit. So yeah. that's basically where I'm at now. Hey, speaking of racism, speaking <laughs> of racism, did you hear about Papa John? I I just You're saw it, I just saw it this uh, earlier today. I was like I guess hey, dog, this nigga said he losing money because of the protest, dog. Not because he make them shitty ass pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a that's a I mean that's I mean yeah I mean he's using I don't know see like that's one of those like damn if you do damn if you don't type of situations. But yeah I mean. You know, even it's though a, he should have done a, that shit like the first week, it's a, you know, it's a give, thing that you could just shut the fuck up. Yeah, given given half off pizzas just because your team wins, dog, half the league wins every weekend, dog. So you know what I mean? <laughs> you make you make shitty ass pizza, dog. I mean, I like pizza, so I'm gonna like pizza regardless, though. No, I'm saying, but like in the fucking echelons of pizzas, dog, Papa John's is not good pizza. Is what I'm saying. Of course, everybody. Not, like yeah, it's not a go-to. It's not it's a go-to. Fucking yeah, bread, meat, and fucking tomato sauce, nigga. Who don't like those three things? Yeah, I mean, it's not. <laughs> it's not a go-to. It's not like a, a party favorite. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, uh, yeah. what I'm saying, this nigga, but come on, dog. NFL not handling players kneeling against racism doing anthem, dog. It, uh, motherfuckers just killed me. All right. It's like we gonna, we gonna blame we gonna blame everything on niggas being upset with racism. That's basically what it just said, right? The NFL, even though even though we talked about this already, the NFL has a shitty product on the field right now, dog. You got subpar quarterbacks out there playing subpar games. You know what I'm saying? And some of these scores, you got teams that ain't scoring no touchdowns in a league. In a league that is biased against defense, how is that happening, nigga? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to pull shit up, man. Go ahead, keep talking. You nigga on that Insta paper, dog. But it's like to blame. It, okay, so I just don't get it. People, I don't know, dog. I'm just, I'm just, I just get tired of, dog. I get tired of niggas being blamed for everything. I hear you though. I hear you. Of course, Shaffner. This should have been nipped in the bud a year and a half ago. Shaffner said, <laughs> "You get them, you get them niggas to work. <laughs> get them off they need. Papa John's way. Fuck him. Fuck him and his pizza, nigga. I hope I, I think I hope he go under. <laughs> yeah. Hope that nigga. Hope that nigga giving out free blowjobs for every pizza that come next year." And he's sucking the dick. How that sound? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but what are you doing? I'm trying to find it, but I I can't seem to find it right now. Like the I got I got I got to figure out a way to share my Insta paper account with you. That's that's all I do, right? No, no, so I'm like, saying I'm trying to find the video so people can, our listeners can listen to. Um, will him say it? Yeah, because all, all I got is like it was he put out a couple of tweets. No, nah, I think there was a. I think there was a. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, what I got is there were a couple. There were a couple of tweets. <laughs> so, so it says on Q on three Q earnings. Uh, so third quarter uh, earnings call uh, at Papa John CEO John uh, Shadner blames NFL leadership for current debacle between players and on and owners. Stock is at negative five percent. Good or bad leadership <laughs> at the top. This example of poor leadership. Shadner said cut earnings projections. Cut earnings projections in part because of another year of unexpected decline in viewership of NFL execs, says on call. Well, here's my thing, though, bro. What's that? that? That means you had you had piss poor vision then. Because if you thought these motherfucking protests were going to end, especially you had the whole you had the whole summer build up. You know what I'm saying? The whole off field all off season build up, summer build up, where niggas was like, oh. Who gonna get Colin Kaepernick? Who gonna get Colin Kaepernick? Who gonna get Colin Kaepernick? So you already had that. 
So you didn't put your stock in somewhere else. You didn't put your 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 fucking investment dollars into another into another vehicle. That's on you, nigga. Yeah. It, it ain't like all of a sudden niggas just start getting on their knees. In your own tweet, you said a year and a half ago this should have been nipped in the bud. A year and a half ago, your ass should have been planning and projecting to put your money into something else and put your motherfucking advertising dollars into something else. You just a dumbass CEO. Like my man said, you giving away fucking free pieces just because a nigga's pants don't fall down every motherfucking week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because yeah, it's fifty percent off the pizza, but like, because he know it's fucking, trash ass pizza. Yeah, but it's still though, half the league wins on on Sundays, and then Thursday, yeah, you have one team, but and then Monday you have another one. But a week in, week in, week out, half the league wins. Huh? Like, so I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what kind of. Dealings, and then even then, like you know, that's not just like two NFL. I mean, I like that he's blaming on the NFL with with, with the viewership. I give I, I give him a little bit of credit, but not too much. But you know, because considering that that you know they still they they do the same shit for baseball, they do the same promotions for 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 basketball, or whatever. Because you don't want the Royals were playing. Like if the Royals won the. The, the night before, you know, the next day, it's half off because the Royals win. And if the Chiefs win, the this ha- it's half off because of the Chiefs win. So, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, it wasn't just, it wasn't just like, you know, NFL. So, and, yeah, I, I get it. And, I get and, it. And, and, and then it also. It just ain't him. I'm just saying I'm tired of motherfuckers blaming peop- the people who are protesting the abuses and racism going on in this nation, blaming them instead instead of saying, "Hey man, could y'all please fix the fucked up system so niggas will buy my shitty pizzas?" Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think that's just a cop out. I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, but that goes that goes back to white privilege, though. He, he ain't affected by racism. His his son or daughter or children or whoever the fuck he got in his family ain't gonna get bust over the head with no batons and get get fucking catch two in the back. So he ain't worried about that shit. He's just worried about making money. The only thing he know is you niggas won't get off your knees. So white people are uncomfortable and don't watch the games because racism is put in their face. So obviously, it could never be the fault of sensitive ass white people. It got to be the fault of niggas. So niggas get off your knees so I can make money. Right. It's crazy though, cause yeah, that's that's a that's a borderline like white privilege right there. But. That's bullshit, though. I mean, I'm glad that 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 it's not getting a lot of play neither. Just cause, you know, that, I don't think we need to dwell on on that shit right now too much. So, no, nah, we ain't got to. <clears throat> but yeah, man. Like, so you know, um, I don't really have much, you know, before co- coming on this podcast. Uh, um, I do have a uh, white privilege to share, but I told us the end. And um, but one thing I do want to share is. Uh, all right, so so Halloween just occurred, right? So right. So book, and uh, he, boogity, boogity. yeah, here. So here in Topeka, Kansas, and in part of Western Kansas too, it snowed, it flurried, and snow. It was snow on the ground. Yeah. So um, and it was cold as fuck. Um, but anyway, we still took our kid. You know, I, I took the day off or whatnot, but I still took the kid to daycare. I had to do a couple things. And plus, like, you know, you know, we, we, we got him a costume and they were going to do some costume parade at, at the at the school or whatever. Right. I didn't feel like it needed to be said or anything like that. But anyway, so we planned ahead. We put, you know, our, our costume for Logan was just to get him a dinosaur tail and a beanie with the, like the little uh, dinosaur triceratops looking thing, horns on the back, you know, going like going going on the top of his head or the top of the beanie. Simple. Right. You could put that shit over whatever the fuck, you know, you know, send them there with a with a, a sweater with a dinosaur on it. Had mm-hmm. a fleece, I had a had a Columbia fleece and a Columbia bubble uh Columbia jacket to go over all that. And his gloves or whatever. And I told him, I'm like, hey look, I dropped him off and I said, Hey, look, this is uh you know, in case you guys decide to go outside because at that time it wasn't really it was just cold, it wasn't uh raining or snowing. It wasn't even a forecast really. And I said, hey, if you guys go outside, like, you know, he, you know, here's a sweater, the fleece, and the jacket, you know, um, whichever one, you, you know, he, you guys feel adequate, you know, let you make the decision. All right. So I leave or whatever throughout the day, and, and you know, as I'm running errands, I know, all of a sudden I notice that it's fucking sprinkling, and 
Next thing you know, it's snow, and then it's like, oh, a bunch of fucking snow's coming down. On the grass, it's stuck, but on the, on, on, on the concrete, it didn't because it's still too warm. Anyhow, mm-hmm. anyhow, so we get close to 4 o'clock. Jamie's going to, you know, we're gonna, me and Jamie are going to go over there and see the parade, right? Mind you, this place has, you know, in case they can't go outside to the, to the designated uh, playground area, they have a, a basement that's, that's plenty big, big as hell. Big, you know, they combine, you can combine two playgrounds and, and that's how much space they have to play. And so, you know, normally, you know, if they can't go outside and play, they go down there to do their movement activities or whatever so that they don't, they're not always like cooped up in the, in the classroom. But so we figured like, oh, you know, it's still snowing, this and that. So I figured, hey, that's where we're probably going to end up going to the basement. We're just, they're just going to parade them around, right? Right. That's the fucking logical thinking that I had. We pull up to this motherfucking daycare, and the kids are on, out in the, the three-year-old playground being paraded around. All the fucking parents standing around looking at each other and looking at the kids. Some kids were in, in costumes, some weren't. Some were in bubble jackets, some were, some were just wearing fucking T-shirts. My son just had his fucking tail put on his little beanie, and a, and a t-shirt on though. I mean, he had pants on too, but just a t-shirt. It's cold as fuck. Everybody, everybody out here wearing North Face jackets and North Face coats and Columbia coats and all that shit, all that all that heavy shit, right? But here yeah. you have a fucking two year old. And as soon as I saw that shit, I went to the daycare. I mean, to the, to his room, grabbed his bubble jacket, and, you know, went to where met him up at wherever he was at. I didn't care if fuck if I, I didn't give a shit if I I intervened in the parade or whatever the fuck. I covered my kid up, bro. My kid was like, his arms were fucking cold as hell. He looking at me like, Dad, what the, like, how did this shit happen? I'm like, I don't know, son. I don't know. <laughs> and all the fucking kid, all, all the parents looking at me like, but like, the, what's funny is, it's not funny, but like, it's crazy. It's like, no parent thought that shit. I like, and, and like, I see all the A's with fucking sweaters on and jackets and all this stuff and gloves. Yeah, somebody got, somebody got looking like, hey, man, why does this baby ain't got no coat on? Right, and I'm like, you know, and I get it. But, you know, it? but it, but it's weird, though, sometimes. I think it's just, well, for, yeah, every parent should have that, but every parent don't have that. I think it's like me, like, like years of coaching and shit, that I always find myself looking at other people's kids going, hey, man, why, why you, hey, why your kid got all motherfucking flip flops and we had basketball practice, dog? You know, it's just a little you know, it's little shit, but you always find yourself looking at other people's kids and be like, hey dog, put put a hat on that baby, nigga. What's wrong? What's wrong with you? Right. And like and like for me, like I didn't blow up. And I really didn't want to blow up because, you know, I don't want to be that guy. You know what I'm saying? I was Such already brown, like but brown, it was, you took shot. Like, but in my face I already knew that, you know, don't don't say shit to me, don't say nothing to me. I don't give a shit. I don't give a damn if I'm, and I'm looking at all the other kids like feeling their arms like, yo, are y'all cold? You know? And, you know, you know, granted, once I did something, people started doing things, but it's like, what the fuck, people? And I was just about my kid trying, trying to get him, get him to, and Jamie was taking care. I, I, I told Jamie, you got to handle this because if one of them people says anything to me, I'm probably going to blow up and I'm probably going to cuss in this church. And we're probably gonna get kicked out of his daycare, which I don't want to. I feel like it, this was like an honest, mis- uh, uh, was a dumbass, stupid ass mistake. And we're and when I pick my son up today, you know, we we gonna find out that I'm probably gonna have an emails or somebody an apology and this and that, whatever. But it's like, yo, it, it was so frustrating, bro. Because if you didn't have the basement, I understand. Right, they're not in the military. We train. If it it ain't raining, it ain't training, dog. You know what I'm saying? So we, but we gotta put up with that shit. Not a little kid, bro. Like, but we're 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 adults. We're adults. Not for not for this costume shit. And 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 I understand that some kids where they want to be paraded with their costumes, but yo, if it's cold outside, then put them downstairs. You know what I mean? And and that's what we were trying to say. And one of the aides did approach to my, you know, they didn't approach me, but approach my my wife, and she vehemently apologized. You know what I mean? And said, yeah. and I said, hey, look, we asked, and but but the director wanted to put, you know, said however the costumes, you know, depending on what the costumes were. But even then, 
our kid's costume was designed so that the, the tail goes over whatever the fuck he's wearing. So I'm glad they didn't approach me because I would have blown up right then and there. And, <laughs> and, and it's about other kids too. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing it, it wasn't just my kid. It was other kids too. And I'm like, yo, let's get these kids inside. It's, it's cold. And, right. and, and I said, look, all these adults here, not, now one of them is out here without without a sweater or a coat or a jacket, whatever the fuck, or a blanket covering them. You right. are not out here. So it's like, you're going to put out these kids? I mean, now, I, 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 at one moment, I did believe that maybe Logan put up a fit and they don't want to wear a sweater. And I was like, all right, fuck it. You know what I mean? Granted, he wasn't out there very long, really. So, But it's just the principle of the thing. It's like, yo, you got a basement. And, and like, we was we just had your harvest uh, uh, trunk or treat because it was cold again. We just had mm-hmm. your trunk or treat in the fucking basement with like two hundred plus people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like I'm like, come on, people. So I, I, I'm curious to see. I told Jamie I dropped him off this morning and I picked him up and 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 you know the faces were like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm, yeah. And I made sure I was like, "Hey, say, like, here, say something, say something, motherfucker." He, no, here, here are my, here are the coats. If he, you go outside, you he wears these. Re- regardless, he wears these. Please, he wears these. Okay. All right. That's that. They said okay. So we'll see what happens this afternoon when I when I pick him up. But like, at the same time, like we'll we'll see what happens in the afternoon. You know, but like at the same time, it's like. You know, I, I, I mean, I come back home and I think about that stuff and I'm like, you know, we have, we, we put, we have adults in charge of our kids mm-hmm. and, you know, I mean, Grant, I'm not the smartest tool in the shed or I don't pretend to be, but like there's certain things that don't need to be said, bro. You say, you say I'm not the, the smartest tool in the shed, nigga? Yeah. I'm not the smartest tool in the shed, bro. But I'm just saying, though, it's like, but it's like, you got to. We're supposed to be like the sharpest knife in the box or some shit like that, dog. Anyway, that's my thing. <laughs> Whatever. I'm, I'm sticking with that, dog. Smartest tune on the shit, dog. The smartest tune in the shit. I don't think that's it, though, dog. I'm... Okay, whatever, then. You just catch me on the other one or whatever, but, um. But anyways, I mean that's the kind of thing and I was talking to going back to 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 you know things that that you know relate to our kids is like you know th- the last thought that I had in my mind was like you know cuz cuz I I generally think that if the I wrong right. person if, if the wrong person it might it might, it might be smartest too in the shit. I don't know. I never <laughs> I had, I had it up, dog. It sounded right but it didn't sound right. You know who's not the real smart tool in the shit too, shit, motherfucker. <laughs> but anyway, so that was that was kind of like our our Halloween uh, experience or whatever. But as much as I pray, and I get it, these are this is a a newer, a fairly newer daycare, and, and you know the 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 people are still learning and this mm-hmm. and that. But it's like it's we go back to all the other things like. Do we really? And I know that 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 um, you know, especially when we do after action reviews or whatever, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure next year they'll have a contingent plan because really, no one really was expecting the type of snow or whatever. Um, but like that, you know, next year is hopefully there's a contingent plan, you know, because because even last year was uh, pretty warm, so it, it they 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 did it outside or whatever the fuck. But mm-hmm. um, so we'll see what happens. But like it's kind of. It just kind of, and, and, and that had me thinking about, you know, why do we always wait for things to go wrong and, and to address them? You know what I'm saying? And just everything that's been going on in, 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 in the news or, in, or in, in the world today or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, I, I understand that. I understand the logic behind it. Meaning, like, it may not be in somebody's forefront uh, uh, of thinking until it actually occurs and that's when you actually and I think for the most part I think the business or, or in the real world that's how things are usually handled you know until they, they until they're 
uh, they become they they come to the to the forefront of things or in the present. Um, things don't really get 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 addressed. Shit, they may not even go. They may be not uh, acknowledged, but not addressed. Um, you know, just like this shit would. Uh, and and not and this is a horrible segue, but just that that mind that mindset had me thinking about you know everything that's been going on with with this Harvey Weinstein cat. Um, and, and everybody else associated with that shit is like, and everybody that was, that's, that's come out and said that they knew about this shit, but then all of a sudden, like, but y'all stay quiet. I know some mm-hmm. people, and I can't name them right now, but like some people did try to voice their opinion or whatever, voice their concerns. But at the same time, it's like, because this guy was such a fucking big wig in the, in the movie in, in Hollywood, um, they let that shit get away, man. They, they get away with all that shit. They even fucking had a clause in the motherfucking in the Harvey in, in the Weinstein company, um, the board of directors. They had a clause. Uh, uh, they had a buyout clause, like meaning like well, yeah. if, well, they if, had, no, not a yeah. buyout clause to buy them out. It was a buyout, a payout clause. My bad. I'm sorry. It was a payout clause. Like we're gonna allocate you so much money in case. Something went, will happen. They didn't really address well, what will well, happen. Well, basically, well, basically what but, I, I didn't know you talking well, about. They had, but there even, was a clause in there where basically, as long as long as like it was, I forgot how I read, but basically, it was I call it the sexual harassment, yeah, sexual assault clause. Basically, as long as he paid or it was they were able to pay or cover, yeah, any uh, allega- basically, put as long as they had enough hush money. For these women, and that's what it was. And the, allegations, yeah, that's basically what it was. And, and it was, it, it was, it was legally, clause. yeah. And, and it yeah, wasn't but, but, the, the clause was there, but it also the board of directors allocated yeah, so, so I'm, much I'm money agreeing, towards I'm agreeing with that. You. I'm agreeing with you. It was. I'm agreeing with you. It wasn't a clause. It was basically they want to make it sound legally like it's this legal thing. It was basically as long as we got enough hush money to pay for these fucking things that we know are gonna. So basically, we know you a touchy, rapey, yeah. sex offender, fucker. So as long as we got enough hush money for that shit, you good. But once the hush money run out, it might be a problem. That's yeah. basically what they said. Yeah, and and, and 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 it comes to no surprise that a lot of this shit is coming out at the same time. When if you look at it, there was a decline as far as like I don't know about the, as far as the stock, but like yeah, that 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 company wasn't as profitable as it once once was. So I think, I think it's like they were trying to get rid of this motherfucker also. So it's like. It's like this, 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 like it's like with the NFL, this perfect storm of shit. Like everything he's been doing, has been doing, and getting their way with, is coming to light because one, they're losing money. Two, he's a cost. He's a he, he's a big cost and cause them a, a loss of money. So three, yeah, let's get rid of him by letting all this shit that we've been knowing for years come to light, and we look like we the good guys at the end of the day. When you're not, you're not the good guy. You've been knowing this motherfucker's been doing this shit for all these years. Yeah, I mean, and that's kind of one of those things is like, you know, that whole logic where I said about like, you know, that that we usually wait until things happen before we address them or things change or whatever. But shit, even right there, that even that cl- that clause or whatever, the that money allocation for for harassment shit. That shit goes against logic, think logical thinking, and it's like, what the what the fuck? Like even even when we know things are things might happen, we we and we have a plan for that, but we don't address that the actual issue. We didn't address like the 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 issue of you being a fucking perv and a, a criminal, you having being an addict, like and an actual con, uh, concern to to the community, dog, like. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. And I, and like now it's like, okay, so what, what's gonna, I mean, you know, what's gonna happen now with these people? And I get it. Some people, and I already saw that they 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 um um they canceled uh Netflix canceled House of Cards after old boy's allegation of of sexually assaulting a 14 year old. I don't think it's rape, but I think it was just sexually assaulted or harassed a fourteen year old. Ain't no just though, but no, yeah. I and mean, I'm about to talk about that because, but, but the way the way that motherfucker tried to say, so basically, <laughs> you 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 diddling little kids, dog. We talked about that word diddling. You diddling little kids, fourteen year old boy, and you come out and say, hey, don't forget I am gay. Like, 
you being a rapey pedophile is equal to you being gay? Did, did you did you hear that shit? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Hey, but, but real quick, so all right, so the 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 um going to the uh, Harvey Weinstein contract. So according to the contract, I'm getting this on TMZ, and I'll share this on on the show notes. According to the contract, if Weinstein quote unquote treated someone improperly in violation of the company's code of conduct, end quote, he must reimburse the the the, the, the Weinstein company for settlements or judgments. Additionally, quote unquote, you Weinstein. We'll pay the company liquidated damages of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the first for the first such instance, five hundred thousand dollars for the second such in- instance, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the third such instance, and a million dollars for each additional instance. So not only are you saying that, not only are you saying it's going to happen once, <laughs> if it happens a third, or a, a second, a third, or fourth, should they even they capped it off at a million dollars after the third? But it's the this, hush money clause, this, this and, and, and the and the dude at that point in time, they were making so much money with this motherfucker dog. It's like it's and, like paying paying pay pay a, pay a million dollars here and there when we making motherfucking multi million dollar movies. You know what I'm saying, bro? And 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 TMZ continues. The contract says as long as Weinstein pays, it constitutes a quote unquote cure for the misconduct. And no further action can be taken. Translation, Weinstein could be sued over and over as long as he wrote a check and he kept his job. Yeah. And 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 this wasn't just to him. This was the clause across the board members. It wasn't just Weinstein had this clause. You know what I'm saying? And uh-huh. and there was no women in this clause in this board. So that's another uh bullshit. But anyway, so that I just go, you know, my my rant or whatever, it's like even even if I give the benefit of doubt of saying, "Hey, uh, daycare, learn from your past, your previous, uh, your past history, and at least have a contingent plan. Um, at least just plan on being in the basement parading your our kids, and because that's a that's an environment you can control. And yeah. then if if the weather changes, that your contingency plan." Could be, hey, if the weather co- co- uh, co- cooperates, we'll be outside. You know what I'm saying? Don't make it the opposite. Don't make it your contingent to be in the basement, but because weather's somewhat fucking cooperating, we'll still do it outside. Regard, like, irregardless of the costume or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You know, right. kinda, that was a big concern. It's like people spend so much fucking money on a costume. I'm like, yeah, but I don't want my kids to get sick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so just going back on that, it's like thing just just like me being cautious now, even looking at reading this fucking clause, and just forward thinking and being like, I'm still gonna be concerned about what the fuck's gonna happen next year. You know, I'm like, I may not even send my kid there because what I can't control is him not being in that environment. Right. So, I don't know though. My I'm bad. out here just saying. No, I, I feel you. We, 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 it's we, asinine, dog. We worry about kids, so it's That's... like it's asinine. It's like yo, like people, people don't like. I understand the logic behind not addressing shit until it happens, and then learning from it, and then moving forward. Mm-hmm. But in cases like Harvey Weinstein and, and shit still going on, people are coming out out of the woodwork. And just like oh boy, uh, was that Kevin Spacey? He the only re- the only reason hey, why he came well, out. Hold on, hold on. Hey, I pulled up his uh his uh pulling from the last episode, quote unquote apology. Can, can I read it right quick? Who's this? Kevin Spacey. Okay. So I have a lot of respect and admiration for Anthony Rapp as an actor. That's the the young man. Okay. This, Rapp, hey, this yeah. is this is a negative and white privilege, and moments and white of white privilege. I don't know if it's I don't know I don't. Bro, it's, a I mean, I've been, it's a negative. It's a negative moment of white privilege. No, 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 no. I don't know if it's white privilege, but probably because I don't know. I, I don't know where to put it. Dog, it's fucked up. So here we go. It's a it one. So if, it, if it, and we are. It's, oh, it's always it's always an it one. <laughs> but that, that's the default for America. Uh, I have respect for and admiration for Anthony Rapp as an actor. I'm uh, beyond horrified to hear his story. I honestly do not remember the encounter. 
It would have been over 30 years ago. But if I did behave, then as he describes, I owe, his sincerest, I owe him the sincerest apology for what would have been deeply inappropriate drunken behavior. And I'm sorry for the feelings he describes as having carried with him all these years. This story has encouraged me to address other things about my life. I know there are there are stories. Ah, sorry, my computer decided to close the screen. Sorry. Uh, I know there are stories out there about me and that some have been fueled by the fact that I've been so uh, protective of my privacy. As those closest to me know in my life, I've had relations with both men and women. I have loved and had romantic, romantic encounters with men throughout my life, and I choose now to live as a gay man. I want to deal with this honestly and openly, and that starts with me examining my own behavior. Nigga, what? Yeah. Did, you hear the, did you hear the actual apology in there? No, and that, that's what I'm saying. It's like... Can, can, the, can we break this down? The only, reason why, the only reason why he fucking said anything is because he, 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 he on, said that Frank, if, if... Go ahead. Frank, there's two things here, bro. Go, come on. I may not... I don't remember exactly all the women I've been with. Like, no, no, I, mean, I'm not, I don't remember the exact encounter or what happened during the events of all the women I've, I've been with. But I do remember all the women I've been with. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do remember all the women I've been with. I mean, I remember exactly what happened or what the outcome was or if everybody enjoyed it. So you mean so what you're telling me is you didn't fuck with so many 14-year-old boys and maybe girls, who knows, you said men and women, that you can't remember the time you fuck with a 14-year-old boy? You can't recall it? Is that, is that what you're telling me? What's the other option? What's the other option here? You 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 telling me I don't remember fucking with a 14 year old boy, but then again, I drank so much. Who knows how many 14 year old boys I fuck with? Right. That's what I got out of that first paragraph. Am I wrong? I don't think you are, man. Like, and, and, and then this next paragraph is so cowardly. And also does so much damage to the gay community, bro. Because you already got motherfuckers out there that, that equate homosexuality with pedophilia, right? Right. Which is, and if you want them people, please stop our show, delete it, delete it from your motherfucking player. I don't want you to be a fan of our show ever in this life. I don't care if you the, the only if you the fifth fan and we only got four now. If you a motherfucker that equates homosexuality with pedophilia, please stop the show now, delete it, and fucking close your eyes and die. Jump off a fucking bridge. Please, 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 right now. That is so cowardly, dog. That is so cowardly, nigga. Oh, and, oh now, now that the stories of me being a pedophile come out, let me also say that I'm a gay male. Like, nigga, like, and, and you know, people are so simple. Well, People that we fuck with see through the bullshit like you did and see that, oh, you trying to seek that cover. Like, oh, well, I was gay and confused, and that's why I'm a fucking kids. One, nigga, one plus one equal cat shit, dog. One ain't got nothing to do with the other, nigga. You was a fucking grown-ass man in Hollywood fucking with kids, dog. You being gay is a variable that ain't got shit to do with this equation right now. What are you doing now? You trying to find the story? Frank. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I just want I just want to make sure I got this uh audio. But yeah, man, like yeah, that yeah, that the whole first of all, to all to all our to all our, our, our LBGTQ slash LBGTQ Q A A B B Z Z Z whatever. Whatever acronym is. I, I for lack of knowledge or whatever, lack of um It's a lot of words. Letters, whatever, yeah. That you know, is my bad. We stand by bad. you, regardless, right. Ir- regardless of whatever the hell. And 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 this insensitive ass bastard, Kevin Spacey, fucking, you're basically hiding behind the fact that you're gay. No, like that. that you know how much harm that does to the gay community. You could have just said, "Hey, I apologize for what, but, for just but, just say, hey, my bad for touching or fucking this little fourteen year old kid.' But if you, that won't but if you think again, about it though, period. If you think about it though, it's the perfect. If you a coward. If you a coward like this motherfucker showing himself to be right now, it's the perfect cover, dog. Because if you attack him, 
there's gonna be a lot of his fans, a lot of his fan base, a lot of people who who really like Kevin Spacey and got that Kevin Spacey agenda and got that who can't separate the fact that he is a man who fucked with a 14 year old boy. And he is a man who fucked with a 14 year old boy who also happens to be gay. They, they're not going to be able to separate that a lot of people. So he's trying to get that cover by saying, oh, yeah, I did. I don't know. I was drunk that night. Oh, yeah. By the way, I'm gay, y'all. Hey, fucking fucking asshole. I mean, like that kind of shit right there. And, and look, and I get it. Look, some people are going to give him credit for coming out because he wanted to get ahead of that. But we again, we don't know how long. I don't know if it's telling us in that story how long ago this shit occurred. Well, he but said, he, it said it said he said it would have been over thirty years ago. That's what he says in his oh, own. Oh, but you fucking stay quiet for thirty years, you fucking cocksuck. Doesn't make it any right. But 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 it's just, and then people shit so badly on the victims because like, why didn't you say this? Why didn't you say that? Why didn't you say that? And people and I say it all. I'm, I'm like sometimes I find myself in these discussions at work. I'm like. You motherfuckers come here every day and complain about working here, but y'all don't quit. You come to a job every day that pays us nicely. Y'all say y'all want this to be better. Y'all want that to be better. Things get untreated. The, 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 the cardiovascular technology doesn't get treated like the nurse and blah, 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 this and that. But I ain't seen none of y'all quit. Nor have I seen any of you motherfuckers go to the manager and say how you feel. But you want these other people who are Young actors, young actresses trying to come up in this industry that is very fucked, that is cutthroat as shit. And y'all want them to sacrifice their livelihood by coming out. There's a fear. It's like you got fear going to the manager and saying, hey, man, this is fucked up. This doctor yelled at me. Oh, oh, this, this doctor embarrassed me and yelled at me because I didn't have a, a particular wire on the table and embarrassed me in front of this whole room of six other people. But you want these other people to come out and risk the fact that they may never get another acting gig again just because you think, well, everybody should come out, everybody should do this, but you don't you don't even see the own your own cowardice to come out at your job. And it's like in the it just but but it always it just goes back to everybody else on air somebody else to do something that they won't do. When we talked about people put uh boycotting the NFL and they want these NFL players to give up their livelihood, you know what I'm saying? And they pump their chest up. Well, fuck them niggas. They they some coons. They won't give up. They won't give up the NFL. Like, but you won't give up your job, and you hate your job. Them niggas may love their job. They just hate the owner at their job. You know what I'm saying? Once again, you were. I don't know what you're doing. I'm here, man. I'm I'm listening to you, man. I'm telling you. So so here's here's what I got from the Daily Mail. Let me know if you could hear it. Give me just give me a thumbs up if you could hear it or not, all right? On top of me. That's the sensational accusation. Star Trek Discovery actor Anthony Rapp has made against Kevin Spacey. Now the House of Cards star is publicly apologizing while acknowledging for the first time that he chooses to live his life as a gay man. Let's head to Brandy Williams in our LA newsroom. And Brandy, when did this all happen? Jesse, Anthony Rapp met Kevin Spacey back in 1986 on Broadway. Anthony was just 14 years old at the time. Spacey was 26. Allegedly, Spacey invited him back to his apartment and made a drunken sexual advance towards him. He alleges that Spacey picked him up like a groom picks up a bride and tried to make sexual advances. Rapp said he ran into a bathroom, he locked the door, then he eventually booked it out of the apartment. All right, Brady Williams in Los Angeles, thank you. You know what I'm saying? And at no point, at no <laughs> point in time has Kevin Spacey said that shit didn't happen, dog. Understand this, dog. If a motherfucker is on any kind of anywhere, any place saying some shit that I did not do, nigga, nigga, I, I'm like, fuck him. I ain't apologizing for shit. I ain't touch him. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. I'm not saying, well, you know. I can't recall 30 years ago, and if I did do that, it was because I was drunk. And oh yeah, by the way, I'm gay. Like what? Yeah, man. Like, no, you're not gonna get a pass. I think, you know, I, I some people are gonna get and credit get, for doing and it. To use a gay, and to use a community that always that already gets shit upon so much in America, to use that community to be cover for your coward. Pedophile ass nigga, come nigga, come on, man. What the fuck? 
And I just yeah, you, you got people out here defending him, talking about well, that was years ago. Why is this guy coming out now? It's just a witch hunt. And you like bitch. Even the person that you want to defend because you got a fucking love affair with Kevin Spacey, he's a great actor. That's fine. It don't that, that's great. It don't excuse the fact that he fucking touched a kid and even he won't deny it. Even he won't, won't deny it. Nah, yeah, and and I guess now D- Dustin Hoffman also has a, a statement, and I get it. Like this opened the floodgate, floodgates, floodgates or whatnot. Flood, but flood just lakes. know that this, just know that this shit's still going on, man. It's still happening, man, and and it's like we know about this shit now. You know what I'm saying? So like, let's. uh advances toward him when he was just 14 years old. This, Spacey has found himself the target of negative reactions on Twitter because of his decision to combine that apology with a coming out statement. In an interview with BuzzFeed published on Sunday, Rapp alleged that a then 26-year-old Spacey invited him to his Manhattan apartment for a party in 1986. They were both starring in hit Broadway plays at the time. Rapp says he was the only teen at the party and spent most of the evening in a bedroom watching TV. He claims he was unaware the party had ended and he was... Hold up, hold up, hold up, dog, hold up, hold up, dog, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, nigga. Why we inviting kids to the party, nigga? Hold on, pimp. I didn't been to a few parties at your house, nigga. Let me come to your house. There's some motherfucking 14, 15 year old boys or girls just walking around this motherfucker while we drinking. I'm like, first of all, who are they? And if you don't say that's that kid's uh parent right there, if you don't say that, nigga, I'm like, why the fuck are they here? Well, if, uh, even not even that. Let's just even say, hey, they're the babysitter, and they're taking a, they're taking care of the kids. They, they, but what are we gotta drinking? Be, they gotta be I'm just saying, something. They gotta That's, have a yeah. reason to be here. They right. have to have. Why is a fourteen year old at a party with a bunch of adults and ain't nobody saying nothing? Yeah, nigga, I'm like, uh, hey man, why you got a fourteen year old? First of all, nigga. Why you got a 14-year-old boy in your bedroom, nigga? What's really going on, my man? Yeah. Like, the, I mean, I like the, how they opened it saying that he capped it off with a coming out statement as well. Like, but okay, I, 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 I'll be, I'll, I'll play ignorant. And I mean, I didn't know. I don't know Kevin Spacey was gay. But they, but they, they did. Well, like they I said, I there's, I a, there's, there's, always, I, I, there's always been, I never knew he was gay, but there's always been. Rumors to the fact that he's been with men and women. It's always been rumors, you know what I'm saying? It's like Luther Vandross, nigga. Nobody ain't never seen that nigga with a man. But there was always rumors, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. But, but it does, hey, but, hey, like, it, it, it just seems coincidental that, like, his most, like, how you say it? Like, gay or homosexual role he's played ever, House of Cards, nigga. And now he's coming out as gay? I mean, like. Was, was this, this in the planning? And, and this is like another, and and I get it. Like Anthony Rap, I mean, I, I mean, don't I mean, really know. Not, not, the, not, not Anthony Rap, not the fourteen year old boy, but well, but, well but, Anthony Rap was the fourteen year old boy. He was another. No, actor. No, I, no, no, no. I'm saying this. We, I've never seen Kevin Spacey in a role like this on House of Cards, where he's with both women and men. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. And I, I don't know. I mean, already they. I mean. Yeah, this is it's fucked up. I mean, and like and and all those people like um, what was it, Gwyneth Paltrow? Uh, I guess when Gwyneth Paltrow was dating, or what what what's his name, Brad Pitt or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Like he knew he tried to do something, but like again though, you going you going into an industry that's how that had this shit going. I mean, they they had history like in the forties and fifties when this shit was going on in the movies, but like, I mean it's. But I just don't like the fact that he. I feel like he tried to pull, you know, pull, um, not blame, but like I, he took the focus of what he actually did, and, and that so that he, they, he could fo- they, people could focus on the fact that he quote unquote gay, came out uh, gay. He's gay now. He but came it, out officially. But, it, but it's, and I'm it's, like, it's, it's gonna be, you're doing a disservice to the gay community which you belong to now. It's oh, like, but there's gonna man. be idiots. There's gonna be idiots out there gonna be like, look how brave he is. He came out and it's like. Yeah, at the the fact that he's a fucking pedophile. And shout out to Netflix for canceling that fucking House of Cards. And I and, and I know Netflix ain't gonna 
it's not like they could take it to another network because Netflix owns that motherfucking uh, show. So, and the rights to it. So, uh, peace out, Kevin Spacey. See ya. It's just, it's just, that's just crazy, dog. That's just crazy. And it's not just him, man. Look, Harvey Weinstein, his brother, his agents, the board members, uh, and, and any yeah. other fucking producer, um, fucking, uh, that I don't fucking know, dog. Like, just fuck it's, it all. It's, I say it, when you think up, about man. it, it's, just, it's it's maddening to think about. I mean, like, like, like the world, the world outside, you know, your little bubble, our little bubble. And like, I, I would like to, I mean, and I'm not with you niggas every day, but I would like to think that, you know, all the people I really fuck with ain't never put no woman in no position to where she feels she got to give out or she ain't going to be able to get a ride home or uh, a harm may come her way. So maybe that's me being, I don't know, being ignorant. I don't know, but I, I mean, but I, I want to believe that. And in my heart, I, I believe that that all the people that I truly, really fuck with are advocates for women, advocates for women, uh, advocates for children, uh, and would never put a woman or a child in such a position to where they think that they, they got to do something to get ahead or do something or harm is going to come their way. And I think you know when we're in these little bubbles, and it's like when shit like this happens in the world, you're like, what the fuck is really going on? I mean, who? Who, who who are you hanging around with that allows this to happen? But then again, it's just that whole that whole thing of influence and power, man. Where it's just like, you know, Weinstein not not just for women though, but if you a dude that came out against him, you know what I'm saying? He he could have made your life real hard in Hollywood. But it's like, what do you value more, man? Like like being able to sleep at night knowing that you put a, a, a evil motherfucker behind bars. Or got him up out the got him up out the motherfucking boardroom, or you okay with just making another couple million dollars and going about your way? But I, it's and, and for me, I, I really want to put that on the men, the men, because a lot of men knowingly let a lot of women get fucked up in all of this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that, talking about Weinstein uh, specifically, a lot of men knowingly let a lot of women get fucked up over this, and said it did nothing because it wasn't affecting them. You know what I'm saying? Like, they basically was like, you know, and I ain't calling these women bitches, but they basically was like, as long as these bitches show up and shoot these shots, you know, or hitting their lines, that's all I care about. Fuck what they got to deal with, you know, off the set. Yeah. You know, but it, but then again, but it... it, it, it Actor Brian what the hell? Encouraging America- sorry, sorry, sorry. Not ready for that. Oh, that's Cranston, dog. Fuck him. Yeah, that's... that's- yeah, we- that's my we, my moment in white privilege. Hey, we, hey, we, we, we can move on. Oh yeah, let's, let's go on to that. Cause we gotta start getting up out of here. I gotta pick up uh, <clears throat> kids from the daycare. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, man. Like that. More to follow on that, man. Hopefully, but man, and we didn't even touch. We didn't even touch on fucking laying out the 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 guy the ground rules for blocking people on Facebook slash Twitter slash Instagram. But that's that, for that'd another be, episode. That'd be another episode. But anyway, so if you don't have a moments of great white privilege, uh, do you? I do. Oh, you do? I do. Okay, well, fuck it. I'm going to go first. And okay. so so in my moments of white privilege, great moments of white privilege, uh, I pull on uh, Mr. Cranston. Uh, so... And hold, and hold on, I just want to say once again, these moments in uh, great white privilege could be moments in great white privilege that are that may be not so good and may be very great to everyone else except the white people who have uh, got a, got got ahead by it, I should say. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. So, um, and I'll let you hear, and then we'll have some uh, commentary afterwards. All right. 411. Actor Brian Cranston is encouraging Americans to come together and support the president. During an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Cranston said, If you had a doubt in your mind if this was going to be an actual quote unquote great moment, this is a negative great moment of white privilege. President Trump is not the person who I wanted to be in that office, and I've been very open about that. That being said, he is the president. All right. He had a good starting point. Mm-hmm. Fuck with it. President, if he fails, the country is in jeopardy. The Breaking Bad, bad star is. I I could dig that. I could dig that mindset. Obviously, we don't want the country to fail, so 
we don't want the leader of the free world to fail, and which will in turn the country will fail. Fuck all that. But he didn't end his comments there. Democrat who supported Hillary Clinton during the election. He is also one of the many celebs to say he would move to Canada if Trump became president. But now Cranston he still lives is here. calling for unity, saying we've got to get away from this idea that our country is a political football and someone with a different opinion is the enemy. For more on this and other entertainment stories, check us out on Twitter. So he basically said, fuck y'all if you're if you're against 21 who wants Trump to fail. Uh, if that was anybody that was not popular, we probably would be, like, the headlines would be burning up about this shit. Again, I say it, it, it's only going to go maybe five feet. But a white man in Hollywood, one of the hottest fucking TV shows ever, Breaking Bad apparently, I'm missing something. And I'm not going to watch Breaking Bad ever again. So, Jamie, I know you wanted me to see it with you. Not after this shit. Fuck him and his ideal and political ideals. I don't give a fuck if you were a closet Democrat. You were a closet Democrat. And, I mean, you were out in person Democrat, but you were a closet, closet Republican, man. So, yeah, once again, fuck you. once again, he said he voted for Hillary. He said he voted for Hillary. He it's didn't like vote for no like, Hillary, it's like, man. It's like every, every motherfucker that I know who voted for Trump and wouldn't vote for Hillary... And who's borderline racist as fuck? I always say I voted for Barack two times. I thought he was gonna change everything. It's like you voted for Barack, did vote for Trump, nigga. What? He say he voted for Hillary. So once again, my man, uh, hey Brian, when everybody was shitting on the goat Obama, where was these words then? Where was this speech at then? I, I mean, I know you was making Breaking Bad, but nigga, but you had enough time to uh, make a thing. Hey, you had enough time to say, hey y'all. If Barack fell, the country fell. Where, where was you at then, Playboy? I didn't hear these words. And once again, I found myself getting a speech from a white man whose Trump's policies will not affect at all. A rich white man whose Trump's policies will not affect at all telling me what I need to do. Man, fuck him. how that sound? Yeah. Fuck him. Fuck you, Brian. Fuck you, Brian. I hope you keep making shitty ass movies because you ain't made a good movie since Breaking Bad, nigga. I watched that with that El Chapo shit you did, nigga. That shit sucked. Everything else you done did done suck, nigga. Fuck you, nigga. How that sound? Oh, fucking support Trump, nigga. I, nigga, nigga <laughs> fuck it. If the country got to burn, the country got to burn. Y'all voted. Matter of, fact, matter, matter of fact, I think you voted for Trump, Brian. Matter of fact, you did vote for Trump. I don't give a fuck what you say. If the country got to burn, the country got to fucking burn because y'all motherfuckers let this motherfucker in the house. And now motherfuckers talking about, well, well, we got, maybe we should let it, maybe we should let him away. Y'all sound like an abused motherfucking spouse. <laughs> no, motherfucker, put, lock that motherfucker up. Lock him up. Yep. Shit, man. Y'all, y'all already know. Y'all already know, man, with the indictments going on, you know, the president all of a sudden and now with this terrorist shit that just happened, quote unquote terrorism, they were so quick, man. To call this nah, shit a terrorist nah, in the, the hey, New York nah, City, that's hey, man, sort of. This shit sounds like some false, some uh, false flag shit, dog. You, you, you just, it just so happened that man, that's Manafort shit kick off, and a dude decided to run right. a band to a bunch of people. <laughs> and, and, and the next day, you already got your talking points ready. You already got not even the next day, the same day, you get your talking points ready. Talking about we need, we need to make sure we we get the, uh, we do away with the green card lottery. Seen, seen kind, seen kind of suspicious from a motherfucker who ain't that smart. You can't anyway, run the business. I, you can't run the country like a business, people. It's not a business, man. He's not a business man. Well, hey, Doc. So actually, I got, I got, I got. It's been. I know it's been a minute, but since we already in the great, the the great, not so great moments in white privilege, dog. Oh, hold on. This nigga, my screen will decide to lock up, but that's all right. I got my Windows PC. Fuck you, uh, Mac. <laughs> Hold on, let me pull this up right quick. Yeah, yeah, great moments in white, great and not so great moments in white privilege. Oh, now as soon as I open up my 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 Windows PC, you decide that right. Oh, oh, judge expunges 
Terrence Crutcher's killing from Cops Record. You know, we covered this on one of our podcasts a while ago about in uh, Oklahoma, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The cop uh, killed a black man that, very, that appeared from all appearances to have both hands up, uh, following directions, and she shot and uh, unloaded on him. Uh, Terrence Crutcher was the young man, it wasn't a young man or older man or the black man who was shot by Betty Shelby, who was the officer, right? So what's going to happen is former Tulsa, Oklahoma cop Betty Shelby, who killed an unarmed Terrence Crutcher last September, will have the shooting expunged from her record. Shelby was acquitted of manslaughter and Crutcher shooting in May. Actually, that's like two moments in white privilege right there. She killed a motherfucker on TV <laughs> and uh, was acquitted from it. Uh, according to KOTV, Shelby requested the killing be expunged from her record in which and her wish was granted by a local judge. Like any other citizen who was acquitted, Betty Jo Shelby was entitled to have a record sealed and expunged. Shelby's attorney, Shannon McCurry, said on Wednesday, Betty continues to work and try to serve her community and praise for everyone's continued healing, except for the motherfucker that she killed. Uh, that's uh, me ad-libbing. Uh, this time, <laughs> this crime does not exist for... Uh, empo- this crime does not exist for employment application process and continued. So, and of course, y'all may not already know this, y'all been keeping up with the news, she already had another job. She's working as a. Uh, blah, blah, blah. She is working. I forget where she's working. It's that right there. Oh, yeah. Shelby resigned from the force shortly after being reinstated in light of the acquittal. In August, uh, the group reported she be, she had she was she was, had been working with the Rogers County Sheriff's Office as a reserve deputy. You talk about white privilege, dog. You kill a man. Right, you kill a man in front of the world. You get acquitted of manslaughter. You are able to quit that job and go work at another job doing the same thing, or when you fail as your duty as a police officer, as far as I'm concerned. And on top of that, you're able to go in and say, "Hey, that nigga I killed. Can we get that taken off my record? I don't want that. To, I don't want that to be there no more." Oh. Great, great, and not so great moments in white privilege, my friend. Yeah. Oh man, this episode! I tell you, I don't know if I'm gonna listen to this one four or five times. Though. Some bullshit. No, nah, nah, she's like, I want like, like I, I just want to continue to work in the community. I just, man, fuck her, nigga. Fuck her. Fuck her. Fuck her. I hope she fall down steps, fights the steps for the rest of her life, nigga. Yeah. Okay, and, and it's been a moment, but since I see it's in, it's in the notes, uh, I got a fuck boy. This this one's a little old though. Yeah, fuck it's boy. Not, oh, I got, oh, I got a fuck boy. I got a fuck boy. <laughs> Former White House advisor Sebastian Gorka said that black Africans in Chicago. <laughs> We're killing each other by the bushel. <laughs> Former White House advisor and self-proclaimed terrorism <laughs> expert Sebastian Gorka on Monday said that black Africans in Chicago were killing each other by the bushel. What the fuck is a bushel of black Africans, nigga? How how many black Africans is that, Frank? Is it ten? <laughs> Is it is it fifth? Can we Google it? I don't can we, know. Can we, can I'm, we, not, I'm not gonna Google. I'm not gonna the, Google that. What, what the exact amount of black <laughs> Africans is in a bushel? Yeah, no, I'm not gonna Google how, that. You know what? You know what? And this might also go to great white privilege. Only a white man can proclaim himself a terrorism expert with no form of training. <laughs> as it say, as it stated, self-proclaimed terrorism expert, dog, like. What? What? Yeah. The only the only subject matter expert I'm at is myself. That's it. And even that's even questionable. Hold on, dog. Hold on. This hey, what do you go? What do you get? Hold on, hold on. Did, hold he go to hold the, on, tur- did he go to Trump it, University and get a certificate or something? Nah, <laughs> it's worse, dog. It's worse, dog. Hold on. So the biggest problem we have is not mass shootings. They are the anomaly. The anomaly you said. You do not make legislation out of outliers. Our big issue is black Africans, black African gun crime <laughs> against black Africans. <laughs> Nigga, oh, 
is is he talking about South Africa or America, nigga? What's happening? Is he talking about Rwanda? Probably. Is he talking about lip? He just Corker he said, said he said black black Africans. So apparently, like black black African gun crimes so, against black Africans. So that means that there that there are white and, Africans. And, and, and noted to him, I was about to say, hey, kudos to him for knowing the fact that there are white Africans. Africans. I, I, <laughs> I, I give I give him that. I, 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 if I if I had a hat on, I would tip my hat to the fact that his dumb ass knew that. But even then, that makes it that much more fucked up because he again instead of just saying African, he went to. He d- d- discriminate, but but it but it's so <laughs> funny. It, but it's so funny though. It's like you talk about gun crime, and people always talk about well, well, Chicago is supposed to be this gun free state, blah, 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 gun free city, gun free zone, whatever. Even though you can go so many miles outside the city limits across state line and get a gun and come back, no one ever talks about that shit. But the fact is, your defense of more guns is black Africans <laughs> killing each other by the bushel with guns in Chicago. It's like, huh? One plus one I is cash shit, though. One plus one is cash shit, dog. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I got guns, too. I just don't feel like everybody needs to have a fucking arsenal in their house. But, <laughs> dog, black Africans, dog. That might be, the, it, name, that, that might it, be the show name now. Black Africans. And so, hold on. So somebody was like, somebody, uh, somebody asked after he was done saying his bullshit. <laughs> I assume what he's talking about is African Americans. One panelist said after Gorka finished, "Yes," the former White House officials replied, "Well, that's not what you said." The panelist responded, "I couldn't figure out who these African African Americans." Gorka said, "And you can't tell me these motherfuckers ain't racist, dog. Only a racist says black Africans, dog. Only a racist says black Africans, dog." Because God forbid you just say, I mean, God, I mean, you could just say Americans in Chicago are killing each other by the by the, the truckload or, or the bushel, <laughs> but you, you don't you don't see black people as Americans. So therein lies the problem, Mister Gorka. So anyway, that's my that's my fuck boy, uh, Sebastian Gorka, former White House advisor and self proclaimed terrorism expert. Yeah, screw them all, man. Fuck them all. Fuck them all, dog. Say so, hey, that's what that's what I got for this week. Let me go ahead and delete this shit, cause fuck him. <laughs> yeah, random. Well, with that being said, I don't got nothing else, man. I feel you, boy. This might be our show this morning. To the point. Get in. Get on. Get out. Yeah, I mean, let's close it out. Fuck it. Hey, thank y'all for riding with this one. I don't think this one's going to be listened to four or five times. You know, it's good to be back more consistently. Well, we're mm-hmm. inconsistently consistent. <laughs> so there's a mouthful for you. Yes, sir. <laughs> with that being said, I'm 30 pieces of silver with my Shit. second better half man person over there in Kansas City. I'm, I am the KC Stark. This is a Negro Rockin' Podcast. And as my man would always say, enjoy the music. Be out. Peace. Peace.